Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Slider, and welcome back to That's the Flavor, your weekly podcast where I sit down with my friends and talk about my life. Uh, this week, I am joined by Matthew, Cameron, and Beth, and we'll talk, we'll get we'll intro them a little more. Like, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But before we start off, I want to let you guys know if the audio is a little wonky today on my end, it's because I am currently moving. So this is the final episode in my my current house, and so everything's all packed away and echoey. But you know, I still got to get an episode recorded because it comes out. I guess this is Sunday. So tomorrow. Um, so that's kind of why just a little bit of a preface there. And yeah, it's going to be a three guest show today. So it should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for the support on last week's episode and the episode before that. You guys noticed. Thank you for your support in general. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. Um, you know, Cameron, welcome back to the show. It has been it has been five weeks since you've been on the show. That's how crazy. you doing? How, how are yeah. you doing? When you when you told me that it was five weeks, I, I had like a mini existential crisis. Because I, I literally thought it was like two weeks ago. That's great. We love that. So that's how I'm doing. Absolutely nice. fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. Matthew, welcome back to the show as well. It has been 10 weeks since you have been on the show. I feel like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was thinking about too, I love doing that math because, like, you know, I put out a show a week. And so it's, then I look back at it and I'm like, man, so episode eight, this is episode 18. Let's do the math there. And oh, God, that's a lot of time. And then Cameron and Matthew, the last time you guys were on the show together was episode number three back in March Woo! of this year. Wow. So yeah. that's a little bit of some fun stuff for you. Back and then, March of course, of this year. ten years sh- ago. <laughs> we're time warping. Uh, and then, of course, we have a new guest to the show today. Uh, you, you don't know her. You might not love her. But Beth, welcome to the show. How are you? Welcome to That's the Flavor. Wow, thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm happy hey, you know, to be here. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear it, and I'm glad you enjoyed the intro. I know I'm for something a little more dynamic, a little, you know, not not on the cuff, and I think that's where we landed. <laughs> but you yeah, say it's... not on the cuff? Yeah, I said not on the cuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so instead of off the cuff, wait. I know, that's when, what I... Oh, wait well, a minute, because I guess... That's a real term. Like, that's a term that people use, Christian. Well, like, the term off the cuff is a term. And I would say, like, I guess on the cuff then. So, Hello? Uh, I, I don't know. We're going to we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in review. That's all that matters. Uh, but Cameron, Matthew, I, I believe I asked you this question before. And if not, we can go ahead and go back to it. So we don't need to quiz you on it today. But Beth, you're a new guest to the show, which means I have to put you on the spot a little bit. And what is your go-to Christian Slider memory? If you have to choose just one, the thing that you go ahead and tell people, yeah, so I have this friend, Christian Slider, and he did this, or he does this. What's that kind of that go-to scenario? This is so funny, because as soon as you said that, I had an immediate thought of Christian Slider, but it's like a (laughs) buried memory. Like, it is so that I won't recall it unless someone asks me, like, about this, but it just came to me. Um, Freshman year of high school, Tommy G. List. Oh no! Footage. Like, feel like that's just iconic Christian Slider being your unofficial understudy. You know, that's just that's a bond <laughs> that we have. You know. Yeah, I feel like it also came full circle of my my senior year when I named my music theory project uh, the Footbridge. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, uh, and for for a little bit of context, there, uh, audience, uh, flavorites. Uh, I don't know what you, your guys' name is. You're just an audience. Who knows? I don't know, Cameron. It's it's too much work to come up with an audience name. So like, I'm just kind of rolling with flavorites. You know, we're gonna see where, where it evolves to. I love it. <laughs> Is that like a copyright? I mean, it should be. I feel like I should probably get on copyrights and stuff. You know, I but feel like copyright flavor LLC. <laughs> yeah, flavor Incorporated that's... LLC. Yes, I think uh, that's a good idea. A subsidiary of that's the. <laughs> a subsid. Oh, hi, Ralph. He's already. Owned by Disney. <laughs> uh, what can I say? You know, I didn't want to announce it yet, but I'm, I'm here to let you all know that that's the flavor is now officially a Disney brand. No, I wish maybe one day. Who knows? The brand and also you yourself. Yes, I am owned by Disney. I was a, uh, you know, oh, part of the on, contract. Nick. What are you doing? It, it was it was part of the contract. I couldn't really do anything. You know, you can't buy people, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, but for a little bit of context there, the best go-to memory, our freshman year of high school, we did a little musical called The Music Man, which, <laughs> mind you, I hate so much. Oh, Ralph, stop making noise. It's very echoey in here already. Okay, bye, Ralph. Uh, but and we did a show called The Music Man, and I played this character called Tommy Dealis. I went to go do a line, and I just, like, I don't know what I did. It was, it was the goofiest pronunciation, and, like, 
emphasis on the footbridge, which was the line, <laughs> that I've ever done in my entire life. And then since then, you know, it being high school, I was like never allowed to live it down. But also then I kind of owned up to, you know, it was kind of like my thing. Uh, <laughs> and Beth was also the official understudy, as she stated. It was it was a good show, a really interesting time for sure. <laughs> Is it's that just like one such of those classic Christian slider, like oh yeah, it's part of like the origin story almost, you know, like it's it's one of those moments. Yeah. Uh, but Matthew, what were you gonna say? Is that like one of those any publicity is good publicity kind of things? I think so. You know, because here's the thing: I think I've realized that like anything that I do is is I can always spin it into good publicity. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. Best. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, think about it, like, falling into the recycling bin, like, or jumping the trash can, you know, that may look like an idiot when I do those things, but I always spin it, you know, and now we have, you know, me falling into the recycling bin as the That's the Flavor, like, logo and cover art. So, I mean, always spin it into good things, whether it takes, like, four years to spin it, it's, you know, it's still being spun. Um, it's all as about marketing, guys. As an idea for a, another sort of trademark logo for the show, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. you could have a picture of, you know, maybe a car crashing into the back of a flatbed. <laughs> I think you could spin that pretty well. Oh, yeah. I think it could spin that. It's definitely possible. Um, which that's a story that we've talked about on the show before, I believe on episode three? I believe we talked yeah. about that. I think, or I think, I think it was later. I think yeah, that was the story. I was not yeah. on the episode. Oh, yeah, no, so it was definitely episode eight with Rob. Uh, I'd be a can of SpaghettiOs is the episode title. So if you want to go hear that story, definitely go listen back to that episode. Because, man, that's a doozy. That was I'm so glad time. you have the titles on hand. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, because I have really interesting titles. Like, I was you looking do. at it the other day. Like, my titles are, are something special. Like, that last week's episode was That's the Flavor, the Movie, the Musical. Um, <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and also, one... the teleprompter is holding it up to him. Oh, yeah, of course. And I definitely also don't have my podcast distribution, like, website and links, like, pulled up next to me that has the episode list. Um, <laughs> well, okay, whatever, but... <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. And before we move on with the episode anymore, I also want to let you guys know this episode is brought to you by Anchor, as usual, but we'll tell you guys more about that later. And by Will, I mean me, uh, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you more about that later. There we go. But, Beth, so it's your first time on the show, and I don't know why it's taken 18 episodes for me to get you on the show. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> like, I was thinking about the other night when I, I texted you. I was like, man, it's been 18 episodes. But, Beth, you actually designed the cover art for the show. I did. You did. And what? so, you know, give me some of that, like, creative process. You know, what went into it all those months ago, you know? Um... What was kind of the inspiration? <laughs> Well, I was literally so excited when you said you wanted <laughs> your feet hanging out of her cycling bin. I was like, this is what I was called to do as an artist. Like, this is peak career moment for me. Um, I love that doodle so much. Like, it's great. And then the rest of it, I mean, was like your creative guidance and just giving the flavor that is Christian Slider. The flavor. Yeah, and I think it's it's great because since then, like, I've definitely done things with, like, that, that logo and that art where it's, like, uh, the college I go to, you know, college university, um, it, um, I was doing this thing, it's, like, you can get a photo, like, printed on, like, this wooden slate, and I was, like, that's kind of cool, so what picture did I get printed? Definitely my own podcast logo, yeah. um, did and it's, like, I have that. What? You got it printed on a wooden slate? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Except with his golden play button. Uh, oh, yeah. right. His well, you know, it's, it's, play button. It's actually a golden microphone for podcasts, but you're close, Matthew. You're close. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not up those. on my podcast floor. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And, and I will say, you know, as I, as I keep on teasing, maybe there'll be, you know, a t-shirt in the near future. Hopefully. Knock on wood. Um, or this card table. This laminate card table. Wait, that sounds really hollow, actually. You should sell branded recycling bins. You know how <laughs> difficult that is? <laughs> yeah, but like, that's, a, that's a good investment. Now, what if instead of the recycle symbol, the, it's replaced with me falling into a recycling bin? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the yeah. brand. <laughs> Branding. I mean, then again, I think we got into this last episode a little bit. Is Are like re recycling bins trademarked? Why would they I'm gonna, be? I'm going to have to go with no on that one, Chief. Yeah. Our, let's go to Google for this one. Who would have the trademark? 
Oh, no. Who would have the? Tra- it's a it's a bucket. It's just a big bucket. <laughs> like it doesn't reduce uh, it or do anything cycle. different Registered than other work. containers. <laughs> um. Let's see. Let's see. Go to Wikipedia here. A recycling bin is a container used to hold recyclables before they're taking to recycling centers. Thank you. Recycling bins exist in various sizes for use inside and outside homes, offices, and large public facilities. Separate containers are offered and provided for paper, tin, or aluminum cans, and glass or plastic bottles may be commingled. God, the, the article uses the word commingled. Hmm. Excuse me? Um, recycling bins are... That. Designed to easily be recognizable and are marked with slogans promoting recycling on a blue or green background along with the universal recycling symbol. Uh, okay, so yeah, so it looks like there's no trademark. Interesting. Uh, so we can, it's definitely something we could do. Again, you know, I think it's finding the right company, someone willing to work with me on custom recycling bins, but definitely something for sure. And this if is you... the moment where we remind you all to reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes, it is. Little do you know, we tricked you in 11 minutes into the podcast. Um... That yeah, this is really just a uh, whole episode here to tell you guys to go ahead and recycle, go get take your plastic bottles, your your grandparents, just recycle them, you know. So now the moment's over. Um, I was just thinking about that time yesterday where I was uh, dumping plutonium. Oh yeah, where were you dumping it? Uh, the pond, <laughs> the big one. Well, I, uh, what's it called? The Atlantic. <laughs> I usually put mine in the river along with all my extra ballots. All right. Oh ha 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 ha. That's, that's that's something, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Moment with bought to you by Disney Plus. I don't know. No, I have yeah, to Karen, pay You're stumbling here. You're stumbling here. It's okay. It's you pick true. it back up. I have to pay royalties though because River is trademarked. Is it? Like Cuomo? Yeah, just just like recycling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, I don't need this this year. I don't need it th- this year. Not not even just this week. I just don't need it this year. All right. Save it for 2021. Words, wonder what words you can and can't trademark. You know, like like what, what things probably should not be trademarked that are. I mean, I feel like it's anything that like I feel like the go-to is anything that's like regularly used. Like you can't because I what was I listening to? I was listening to some podcast and they were talking about trademarks, and like it was like you can't trademark the word podcast. You know what I mean? Um, be, because it's is is used by like podcast, ev- everything. Podcast. But like, remember when um, the what you call them brothers tried to trademark React? Oh yeah, the React Bros tried to trademark the word React, and like they they couldn't. Okay, so they they did fail that, right? <laughs> if I yeah. remember, okay, that's good. Because again, it's one of those things like it's it's used everywhere. Because then it'd be that issue of every other reaction channel on YouTube wouldn't be able to use the word anymore. Or, like, they'd be able to use the word, but, like, they'd have to, like, pay royalties or, like, have, like, React trademark in their YouTube title. You know what I mean? Like, it got really weird. That's, like, you can't do that because you're just kind of owning an entire word then. Um, so I think the I bottom what... line is the American trademark system has, you know, it's got its stuff together is what I'm hearing. Yes, yes, I believe so. How I hard do you guys... The bottom line is that words belong to the people. Yeah. We claim the words, the communists of America. Communists of America actually own the trademark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look into it, it's a whole long thing. There was a legal battle, and it went through, like, the Russian Supreme Court. Then it came over to us, and it was <laughs> a whole big thing. <sighs> well, you know, that's where they're based out of. Um, But I got a question for you guys. How hard do you think it'd be to logistically open a bakery? Not very, very difficult. Well, well, hold on. Uh, on the contrary, <laughs> um, so that's... wait. How is that going to be contrary? We both already gave different answers. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Did you? Well, I have a both third of one them. For you. Did... Everybody so has say, given a different answer. Let's say it was a moderate amount of difficulty, right? But also not too hard. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, you want me to continue? Oh, crap. <laughs> well, I expected someone to continue because you're in the middle. Matthew said yes. I mean, Beth said no, it wouldn't be difficult. I'm going to realistically say the hardest part would be actually baking the goods, the investment you would need to make in the materials and whatnot. Not just owning the shop and making it look pretty and advertising, but like actually making muffins and bread. Yeah, yeah I could see that. I mean, you said to start a bakery. I feel like starting is the easiest part. (laughs) 
if you're going to sustain and create a successful bakery, that's going to be more difficult. Okay. 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 Matthew? Well, but, like, when you're first starting up, you got to set up all your, you know, all your connections and supply lines first. That's a great point, too. I think, again, I think my my wording of, um, you know, my my wording of the statement, because Beth makes a great point. You know, starting could definitely be seen as easier, could be seen as hard. I think depending, I think it depends on who you are and who you already know. Because if you, let's just say you know no one. You're just you're a hermit, you know, and you you don't want to you don't know what to do, and you want to start a bakery. I think it's definitely gonna be really hard because you don't know anybody in the bakery space, you know, to like help you start up that that whole world. But then on like the you know, so like there's definitely that aspect. But I think that what if you do know people, and then you already got your ins and your outs. But then I see Cameron's thing of like, what if you don't know how to bake? You know, like then I feel like one, you're probably just dumb. But like, are you opening a bakery? But I feel like Cameron, this gets bigger here. I think that maybe it's a front, you know. All right, what if, so what I, if they're opening a bakery, you know, in quotations, uh, but it's not a real bakery? Well, all right, so hold on, I think that's interesting, but but not <laughs> to be con, not to be contrarian. I, I mm-hmm. hate to be contrarian. Oh, you I would know. never, <laughs> I would never do that. But I think if you know nobody, the draw of the local like bakers and people who work in such industries to investigate like the quality and the style of bakery it is would be larger than somebody who maybe is well known in the community. Hmm. Cause if you're a baker or you are someone who works at like a distributor, a distributor for um, ingredients or whatnot, and you hear somebody who you've never heard of that came from middle of nowhere is opening a bakery. I feel like maybe that would draw you in as opposed to, ah, your friend Mike's opening a bakery. I'll check it out later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely, you know, I, I see. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Are you thinking of opening a bakery, Christian? I mean, you know, I don't really want to get into anything too specific yet, but that's the flavor kit. As a podcast, can only grow so much, you know. Before I got to start branching out, <laughs> can't get in. The- Beth, you're exposing my five-year-long plan right now, and I don't appreciate it. Um, but I think you know, people okay. are demanding a roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, demanding me. a roadmap. <laughs> Hey, he's Trust giving me. it out at the uh, Q4 earnings report. Don't worry. Yeah, there is there is a roadmap in my head. That's what I will say. Uh, you know, and definitely because I think I, I forgot I had Ozzy on an episode, and it was I believe episode number fourteen, and we were talking, and it's like I definitely have a plan for that's the flavor as not only a podcast but also like a, a brand, whether that be other podcasts and stuff like that. Um, and it's more just trying to get everything to a spot where. I can do it. Like I know right now, my one thing is one, making sure that's the flavor is still sustainable, and then two, I really want to. I really want to really. Ugh, I can't talk. I really want to make t-shirts. Um, so like that's kind of where a lot of my focus is right now. And as soon as that goes well, it'll be adding something else into that mix, and then so forth and so forth. So it's one big mixing bowl of like chocolate chips and flour and some sugar, and you know we're making a that's the flavor cookie. Um, but With chocolate chips, flour, and sugar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's that's close. That's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need. And some water. <laughs> no, 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 Cameron. To bind it all together. No, you melt the chocolate chips down, and they're the water. Uh, actually, Cameron, what don't on. you understand? It's three ingredients. <laughs> you ever Here, make a three-ingredient cookie before? <laughs> the oven is not an ingredient. Right. <laughs> but the flour, sugar, and chocolate chips are. You just breathe on it, and it'll it'll cook it. No, the oven's a step, not an ingredient. Wait, is oven a step? Yeah, it's it's closer to a step than an ingredient. Boo. I don't go add a dash of oven in the bowl, you know. But also, you don't oven. You step don't have three. to yeah, bowl. You don't have to do this. Cameron, I feel like your your grasp of an oven. I feel like this is why you can't open a bakery. Uh, you know that's a <laughs> those are strong words i'm opening up a bakery <laughs> yeah yes well okay maybe not but i don't know i've heard that the logistics of doing that are moderately hard but not too <laughs> no hard. one knows me so i think i would be successful <laughs> yeah Cam- okay cameron walk me through like you real real quick of course and i don't want to get too dip- too in depth with it but Walk me through like your bakery strategy here. Like what, what right. like what is really your plan of attack? 
So before I do anything, right, I need to bake the stuff, okay? Um, I have enough room in my basement to keep it all, so that's that's good. Um, mm -hmm. So And then I need to find a building. Uh, it could be a really big one, probably a, a pretty small one. Uh, then once I get the building, I have to figure out a way to pay the person for the building. Um, and I think once I've done that, bakery. <laughs> okay. Well, I also need a car to transport all of the stuff from my basement to the bakery. Yeah, but you can always rent one. You know, you don't need them. Right. Mail order bakery. Well, wait, hold on. Mail order bakery. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mail order bakery. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, I thought it was going to go ahead. I feel like Cameron doesn't want to play his cards too much, so I, I, I understand. Yeah, you know? I have too many industry secrets. <laughs> too, too, wait. How do you have so many? Wait, wait, wait. But you're not. Who's to say I haven't already baked all of the muffins? He's not going to tell you because it's a secret. No, oh, that's a fair point, Matthew. That's a fair, fair point. Thank you. So I want to tell you all a little story. You know, I realized it's episode 18, and. I don't think that I've ever talked about the That's the Flavor origin story on an episode. You know, where That's, that's the Flavor as a, a catchphrase came from. Were we all there for that? Yes. I feel, like, I feel like everybody but Matthew was. Why wouldn't yeah, Matthew have been there? there? Because he, he, wasn't in our, he wasn't in the Pericles troupe that year. But he, was he in Pit Band? No. Matthew. But you what year was it again? Oh, uh, junior. Oh, yeah. This was the yeah. Canst Thou Catch Any Fishes then? Ah, Canst Thou yeah. Catch Any Fishes. Yeah, Canst Thou. Um, but yeah, so we're talking. So audience, buckle in. Grab your popcorn. <laughs> um, you know, grab, grab your wife, your husband, and sit down and just enjoy this experience. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to take you all back to junior year of high school. Which is circa, do the math, Christian, it's 2017? No, 2016? 20, be 2016. Uh, yeah. That yes. part of the year would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2016, fall of 2016. And we're all in, not all in, Matthew, unfortunately, was, you know, not. But the Shakespeare Fall Festival. Uh, and, you know, we're doing a little scene from a, a little ditty known as Pericles. <laughs> all right? And... You know, we went up, we did our scene, whatever. That's not that's really like the unimportant part. Um, <laughs> but we're sitting down, and scene goes by, another scene goes by. Now, I do the fall festivals, all these student directed scenes from other shows. So that's a little bit of like a preface there. So like, we went up and did ours, and it's like, oh, another group did their scene, another group did their scene, whatever. And I believe we got to the fourth or fifth scene of the show, um, and of like of the uh, whole whole event, and there was a kiss at the end. Let us know how happened to be a kiss. And I don't know what the energy was, like, in, in the whole, like, you know, because I feel like the students always kind of go a little bit wild for, like, other students, you know, because, like, who knows what the, how the actual audience is going to react. So I had the bright idea to break all etiquette I've ever been taught about how to act as an audience person, ever. And these two people, they kiss, and I just shout out, that's the flavor. <laughs> Like shout it out, and I think it, of course this time, I think I think Brady was sitting next to me of all people, and he just looks at me and goes, "What did you just say?" I said, "That's the flavor." And he goes, "He said something along the like, yeah, yeah, that's the flavor." And then, and then it was just one of those things, and that then it kind of just became the catchphrase. And anytime something like would happen in a room, and it'd be a little like spicy or a little like you know a little wild, a little fun, it'd be like, "Whoa, that's the flavor," and you know it just kind of perpetuated itself. Well, so I don't think your reaction was completely unprompted, uh, <laughs> mind you. This is an auditorium full of high schoolers, right? <laughs> um, and and I, I think it's important that it it was a gay kiss. And while there is absolutely nothing weird about that. Um, it is a room full of high schoolers. You know, That's a fair point. That's a fair point. It's the end of the night. Everyone's bored. And so as soon as it happens, the whole audience just goes, Whoa! <laughs> That's that's a yeah. It was kind of like it was kind of like when a touchdown happens in high school football. You know, Christian, like the best part is I think there must have been a delay so in your brain because the the noise from the audience wears down, and you can hear in the audio the recording. A single voice just goes, that's the flavor. 
<laughs> no, you can. And then I, because I went back and watched it, and nobody, like, people, I would tell people, like, yeah, you know, you can hear me say it. They're like, what? No, you can't. And then one by one, you have people, like, the next day come into class and go, hey, so I watched it last night, and you could totally hear you. I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I was like, yeah, I know. Um, I feel so, like it's also important to note that we were, like, almost, like, we were in the first five rows at least, like, oh, right yeah. in front of them. Like, it was on well, our side our, of the stage. Our troop was, we were second up that night or something? No, we were first. We, they we made first. us go first, yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh, that's right. <laughs> but, uh, and also, that person is actually my neighbor. <laughs> oh, my god! Man, the sword just keeps getting more and more wild. <laughs> so, I was, I was talking with them the next day, and I was like, man, that was pretty spicy. And, you know, they were like, yeah, yeah was not expecting that reaction from the audience <laughs> like, me yeah. neither well. me neither he says and then of course you guys know the rest of the story that's the flavor it was then you know at one point a book that i was working on and then i was you know now it's a podcast then eventually hopefully it's a brand you guys know the story then you guys know we're talking bakery yeah. <laughs> it is it's gonna be a bakery now that's the even just out of spite for this episode it'll be a bakery <laughs> It's kind of like the uh, like the Salt Bay dudes, like his his restaurants, like <laughs> that he kind of just like opened after salt and a big slab of meat. Like, you know what? You should. All right, first of all, hold on. Two two quick thoughts, right? <laughs> okay. You should open every episode with "Welcome back to the bakery." <laughs> no, I don't. All right, all right. Ignore that part. <laughs> the second part: if you open a bakery, right? Yes. Salt Bay, but with sugar. So you hand them the muffin, and then you just give a little, like, a witcha witcha. What? Hey. You what should end it? your episodes by saying that. <laughs> no, because I know, because I end my episodes are saying stay, uh, stay flavorful. So. I can't, I can't change it now. A witcha witcha? That's the sound that, uh, I don't know. It, it... It's the sound that sugar makes when it hits a muffin. <laughs> yeah. He would tell you what the sound is, but that's an industry secret. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cameras That's over here for bakery industry secrets. If you, if you speed up sugar by Maroon Five to times two hundred, that's that's oh, what it sounds ucha. like. <laughs> you have to pitch oh. it down uh, twenty whole steps as well. But wow. oh, yep. Thank oh you. okay, okay. It's more like a secret code for bakers out there, yes. you know. But before we continue on with the episode, uh, I want to let you guys know about our sponsor, Anchor. And we are back. I hope you guys enjoyed that ad, you know, as you always do, because everybody enjoys ads and anything they watch or listen to. It's like everybody's favorite part, you know? Definitely not people pay for, like, Spotify Premium or, like, YouTube Premium, you know? Definitely, so they don't have to listen to ads. Definitely not. Um, But, yeah, we're back. Um, You know, Beth, Matthew, Cameron, how are we feeling coming out of the first half of today's episode, you know? How are things looking? How's everybody feeling? It's everything I dreamed it would be and more. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to agree with Beth on that one, except I've been here before, so. <laughs> mm. Matthew, how are you feeling, you know? I can probably only go downhill from here. I've peaked. You've peaked? Okay. Which okay. part? <laughs> Industry secret. Industry secret, of course. <laughs> so, real response. Can't tell you. I'm under an NDA. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 I got it. made you sign an NDA. <laughs> yeah. Look, what kind of guys? Look, I got to make sure that my stuff's protected, all right? Like, anything we're talking about today, you can't talk about outside of here because nobody else can hear it, all right? I can't have people, I can't have stuff leaking. Are, are we posting this podcast? Uh, maybe, uh, possibly. And, okay, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, we can't, we can't worry about it. No one's going to hear this, which is why I'm all here to tell you about Redacted. Um, but, no, and also yours in this, I got a question for you guys. I have an answer. So I asked this to uh, my, my buddy Christian, uh, you know, two episodes ago, but we kind of got a little wish, bit of a wishy-washy response. But I feel like I got some real men and, and women of science on the show today, you know. And I got a question that is: so if you fall into a giant vat of spaghetti, and I'm talking like just the, like I, I don't know if it's gonna like the full dish. That's kind of something we can talk about here. And we're talking like you know like the big old like vats of beer they use in breweries, but like full <laughs> of spaghetti. Like, okay. what happens? Um, you have a good meal? Hey, oh yeah, definitely. Um, depends on how the spaghetti is made, first of all. Um, some people really like to lay it heavy with the uh, spaghetti sauce. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like if there's too much of that, or if it's liquidy enough, you'd probably drown. 
Um, but my parents' spaghetti, it's a little thicker. The sauce is, it has meat in it, and so it's not as liquidy, and it's more like a texture. I feel like you wouldn't drown in that. Well, yeah, because if you get together a bunch of spaghetti noodles, you kind of like can form like a, a similar like pool noodle type shape. Right. You kind of just like float. It, well, are, has the spaghetti been, is it just regular spaghetti? Or is this like, has it been expanded, like literally to fit the vat? Oh, no, it's still just normal spaghetti. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, it's very, very normal spaghetti. Yeah. Okay, that's my answer then. All right, all right. Matthew, what are you thinking? Where does your head go to here? My head immediately went to, I don't see what special conditions there would be um, about the spaghetti. That would okay. warrant having a conversation about the ramifications of falling in. All right, Matthew, you know, mm. I appreciate that. Pragmatist. Okay, uh, I see you. All right, all right, all right. Beth, where does your head jump to? I feel like there would just be so much, like, so much actual spaghetti noodles in it that I could probably just, like, push it down and stand on it. Like, there would just be so much that I, I couldn't fall through. Like, because the, the noodles are solid. Like, I could stand on them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, it's, yeah, there's enough noodle in that vat. You gotta imagine that if you just kind of, like, keep pushing towards the ground, you're gonna create, like, a, a floor almost, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think you could make it, like, a trampoline if you just removed the sauce. Because have you ever, like, taken spaghetti out of the pot and put it in a strainer and you, you see how like it's almost sticky it should be sticky right right mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to like take a spoon or something and dig it in there i feel like if you had a big old vat of it you could jump in it like you're at like you know a trampoline park and just go to town maybe you, you know? could like stomp it down into a smoothie like how they used to do with uh, grapes and making yeah. wine <laughs> So we could, oh boy, yummy! You can age it in bottles. Is sell pasta? it under the, sell it under that's the flavor brand. Ooh. <laughs> Is pasta considered a baked good? No, no it depends. Think... If you make, if you bake, if you do baked pasta. Yeah. So if we do baked pasta, could we do a trampoline park that's technically a bakery? <laughs> yes. That's what, made for out like of tax purposes. Uh, yeah, it's a tax write-off. Yeah. <laughs> For the kids. Um, yeah, well, okay, so can we talk about trampoline parks a little bit? Like, because, I mean, I feel like at a certain point in my life, they just kind of started popping up. Now, that doesn't mean, like, that doesn't mean, like, they haven't always existed in, like, some fashion, because I bet they have, like, for a pretty long time, just because of the way people, like, people that do parkour or, like, like you know, heavy training and stuff, like, use them. Uh, but, like, places like at Sky Zone and stuff, I feel like they just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And, it, like, it was just kind of like that thing that, like, I don't know, kids with money did for their birthday. Like, yeah. <laughs> kids with money. I love it. I would have been around, like, middle school when yeah. that, that got big. I felt like I was in seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I don't think I ever got invited to birthday parties, so I can't speak to the fact that it's a specifically kids that have money, but um, it sounds like it. Yeah. Have you guys ever, has everybody been to Sky Zone? Yes. No. Ooh. I, I think I was there once. Hear me out. I say we go now as, as college kids and just <laughs> knock some like middle school kids on their ass. Like just take them out and like the trampoline dodgeball. dodgeball. Yeah, yes. just take them out. That would be really fun. Do you really think that most of us are coordinated enough to beat anybody at dodgeball? I mean, yeah. No. I'm, I'm not Ma terrible at... Do you think at... Matthew is coordinated enough and athletic <laughs> enough? Matthew, what are you thinking here? I feel like you're being slandered a little bit, but I want to give you the chance to defend yourself here on the mic. Two minutes no. to respond. <laughs> I was always terrible at it back in, back in uh, grade school. Well, then hear me out. We dress him up like Mick from um, from Rocky. Matt Matthew, this is, and he stands on the sidelines and he's our coach. Yeah. Ooh. Matthew, I think the Rocky Horror Picture Show at first. No, no, no. Like as as in, yeah. as in the old guy that coaches Rocky in the yes. Rocky movies. Yes. Oh, but Rocky Horror is the uniform. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I can go with that. He's Matthew, how, how do you like that? How does that sound? Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a you know more useful position to me than. 
just kind of standing there. <laughs> I, I feel like, what uh, to do. Matthew, you'd make a pretty awful coach. Whoa. A, I mean, I didn't say way, in a good, good way. One. I think but, in a good way. Because, like, let's say you're a basketball coach, right? Most middle school basketball coaches, those guys kind of suck, you know? Um, <laughs> they're, yelling at, they're yelling at kids. These kids, they're just trying to shoot hoops, you know? And, and I feel like, you know, they'd run laps for a bit, and they'd do their drills, and they'd, Matthew would be like, like, everybody come here, and nobody would hear him. And he'd yell, and nobody would hear him. And then, you know, the secondary coach would have to yell, and he'd come in, and he'd look frustrated, okay? Mm-hmm. Because something, the drills weren't good, right? The team's just really underperforming today. And instead <laughs> of actually presenting his criticism, he would just kind of, he would. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for the in a good way part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think as a viewer, if I was a parent. Come on, myself, Cameron, I'm, bring it around. All right. Uh, he would He'd kind of just like, you know, give a passive aggressive comment, you know. <laughs> And they'd be like, Coach, what did we do, do, do wrong? And he'd be like, ah, just get back out there, you know? <laughs> as a parent. You can spin this. Ma- Matthew, as a parent, I'd eat that up. Oh, my I'd be God. Like, I'd be like, you know, my kid doesn't need criticism. <laughs> my kid's not real. He just needs someone to tell him that he's doing something wrong, <laughs> not what he's doing wrong. I don't have a child. Like, uh, um, yeah, I definitely... Because, I don't know, like, trampoline parks are just weird. Like, I also feel like they're kind of dirty. Oh, yeah, totally. Cleans the trampolines. Now, hear me out. Trampoline parks, lamer version of a roller rink. Yeah. Uh. I mean, well, that's because we were, like, a part of the... I don't even want to say generation, because I just hate we that. We were the very end of that generation. Of, yeah, 1,000%. Like, yeah, that roller skating rink, end. like for fun and social type things yeah i because i definitely think that i have i've had more fun at at, like going roller skating than um like going to a trampoline park yeah 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 so i don't know you know i just feel like it's the worst version of it but i feel like you know roller rings aren't necessarily uh, open as often you know they're kind of like you know they're they're few and far between now i think and so then you have the trampoline parks and it's like i feel like we just got to tear all the trampoline parks down bring roller skating back bring roller rinks back that's really what i'm thinking here yeah well, roller skating is like back on now because like quarantine has made it trendy to be a roller skater again happy to say that i was roller skating before it was trendy <laughs> i got my roller blades last christmas i was so excited wow you're so cool it's yeah bad. didn't you yeah, you roller skated to the diner one time to meet us there. Oh, I remember God. that. Yeah, I just, I urban skate a lot. I yeah. just around town. I'm an urban skater, you know, it's light work. When, when you got there, we probably paid for your food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at that point, I probably was not. Yes, yeah, no, that's that's true. That's 100. It was Christmas time and I wasn't working. So, <laughs> yeah. My man, my man, Matthew, got to expose you like that. <laughs> Look, hey, I work full time now. So next time we go to the diner, expect... No, no, nope. Never yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. I was gonna Expect say. Expect me to pay yeah. for my own meal. <laughs> hey, there's a train coming. Um, should we yeah. get them on the show? Yeah, I mean, it passed by my house earlier. So, like, okay, wait. Can we talk about this? So, I'm I'm moving, right? I touched on the beginning of the episode, but moving is so weird. Um, and it's it's one of those things where well, I, I I'm also I'm pivoting off this because like I don't have to live next to the train anymore, <laughs> which I have lived next to for like eleven years of my life. Um, and I don't know, that's, that's a great bonus, but moving itself is really weird. I think especially when like, I'm as old as I am now. Um, cause like, mind you, I moved into this house, like when I was 10 or, or nine, somewhere in that range. I don't know. I really go by grades more or less. Like when I was in the fourth grade, I moved here and then I kind of just lived there and like that sucked. I remember so much as like a, a fourth grade, like having to like leave what you know, but like now it's one of those things where like. I'm, it doesn't really suck that much because I feel like I'm just like more of an adult, and I'm, I'm wondering like why doesn't it suck as much? You know, I feel yeah. like I feel, I feel like moving should should suck. I mean, like this is where I went the house where I went to middle school entirely, into high school entirely. You know, I've, I've literally in, in six months, roughly, of course, I'm gonna be graduating from college. Like, and so it's one of those, it's one of those weird things where like I feel like I have done more things and more events like in this house or while I've lived in this house, but like I don't care as much. Yeah, I mean I have a different perspective on moving because I moved so much 
mm-hmm. like um to the point where it's just like it's not even sad to move like i don't feel sad moving it's just annoying like tedious i just think of sure. moving and just get annoyed mm. Yeah, I mean, like, I definitely, it's one of those things where, like, so yesterday we spent a ton of time, like, packing up, like, everything else that we hadn't already. So, like, all of our mattresses, et cetera, like, all the rest of our clothes, dressers, whatever. And, like, then I walked into, like, the office where I usually, like, you know, I've been doing my classes for the past couple months. Or, like, we're all, like, record the podcast like I am now. And it's, like, it's just empty. Like, everything that's, like, normal about it is kind of just gone. And it's, like, oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, that like, has to feel wrong, you know? Yeah, it, it feel, like, right now I'm recording because I, I like, when I hopped on the, the Skype call to record the episode, and I was, like, hey, Cameron, does my audio sound a little echoey? Because, like, literally everything is gone. And I'm recording it with just the laptop I use for school and the table I've been using since we originally got some stuff out of the house. And, like, it's just really weird because the only other thing that's in here is, like, my backpack and, like, a little, like, tote bag with some of the other, like, miscellaneous stuff that I, like, left behind. And it's just that really weird thing where it does entirely feel wrong. And it's like, I don't know, I still have to like do my classes for the first couple of days of like this week and stuff and then make sure everything's set up. And it's just one of those weird things like, yeah, it entirely feels wrong and like not okay. I remember how weird it was to come back home after a semester of, of college and like the stuff was still in my room because I didn't bring most of my stuff with me. Yeah. But it was like, it was weird. Everything was like nice and neat and there wasn't as much stuff. Yeah. And that was odd. So, I mean, different feeling, but. No, I feel like it's definitely the same thing. It's like when you're like, I, I, but I feel like almost in reverse. Like, it's just, it's just that feeling, right. though. Um, well, like seeing seeing this space that has been like, you know, a comfort area for you. And it's it's like, it's uninhabited now. Yeah. Or it's about to be. You're seeing what it's going to look like uninhabited until the next person uses it. And that's just that I feel like, you know, like it is, there is someone, you know, moving in, obviously, like after, like on the same day that I'm moving out, like they're kind of like moving in. Um, It's just one of those things is like someone else is going to be using the space and like doing whatever with it. It's just that weird thing of like, hey, take good care of it. You know, like this is, this is like, I don't know. It's, it's where however many like things that I've ever done or like created or talked about have like been created from. So like, just like take good care of the space. I don't know. It's, it's definitely been weird. Definitely been weird. When I moved into my apartment in Pittsburgh, I yeah. realized that I had forgotten um, pillows and um, blanket. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, what? Matthew. My my backpack. <laughs> my bed wasn't there, so it was just an air mattress. No. And my bed didn't arrive until like you know November maybe. So. uh Huh. I'm so sorry for you. That was a, well, that's, that was, that's kind of sucky. Didn't have curtains. I don't, I don't know if we have curtains now, even. Yeah, well, I mean, like, when was the last time you were there, like, at your apartment in Pittsburgh? <laughs> September. Yeah. Oh, wait, like, as in, like, this September? Like, not last September? Well, was that the train? I, I had just moved in last September. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Okay, yeah, whatever. Sorry. Never mind. Also, yes, Cameron, that was the train. How how audible was that? Uh, not too audible. Dot com? But... Oh, okay, okay. Uh, no. Audible.com. One day a sponsor. That's the flavor, hopefully. <laughs> I, I think about sometimes, um, like, being an aspiring musician is that if I become successful and do make this a career – it won't be in the town that I grew up in. I'll have to go somewhere. Um, and it will be very odd to come back to my home and to see, you know, who's living in it and what it looks like years later. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's that weird thing of, again, leaving the thing that has, I don't know, spawned the reason for you, like, wanting to do something and then having to come back to it or, like, just start somewhere new with that same kind of energy and go, huh. Huh. Like, what, what if you come back, Cameron, after, like, you know, getting all big and famous, and you're like, man, the Wendy's is gone, you know? Like, oh, after getting Wendy's. big. <laughs> getting, getting tough. After getting swole. Yeah. Big Cameron. Big, <laughs> big boy. Cameron already big. Uh, but, excuse me? No, like, as I look around my room right now, there's just, there's a lot of personality in here. And like, I am a collector and there's so much memorabilia from all of the shows I did and the instruments I've collected 
and the books I've read, I have them all on a shelf, you know, and those were different like phases of my life. And yeah. so it's kind of weird to see them all together. And just to think that one day when I move into my own house, I probably won't put some of my posters up. I probably won't display some of my like childhood toys and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's just I, think, I don't know. I think that's really interesting because I really enjoy seeing things change after I leave. Like really? I like last semester before Corona, um, I took two of my Dickinson on a drive around Carlisle and like stopped at all of my previous homes. And I don't know, I love the feeling of like going back years later and being like, I wonder what's going on in there right now. Like, I just think it's so interesting. Huh. And I think, I think the great thing is like, I, I feel like everybody like also is, feels the same as you, Beth, in a sense of like, it's not that I hate things changing. It's that I hate things changing without me. Is what I yeah. think it is. Yeah. Because like, I, like, yeah. I, I love to see change. And I love to see progress and just, you know, or maybe the opposite of progress to so regress. Um, okay, but I don't love to see regress. Sometimes it just happens and you just kind of look at it and you go, oh, that sucks. But <laughs> um, it's just I hate not being a part of or not being there for it, especially when it's like, a, like I don't want to. It's one of those weird things like in a year from now, I drive by the, the house I live in like right now for like the last couple of days. And, like it has all new siding and it's like, oh, like, oh, what? No, like. <laughs> Interesting. Like, what? I don't know, like, and just, like, one of the things, like, oh, man, I wasn't there for that. Yeah. But, again, I don't think – here's the thing. I also don't think that I really care in a year, but I care right now that I think I'll care in a year. Uh-huh. I yeah. don't know. Weird. It's weird. It's, it's extremely weird. Um, like, I know my parents take care of this house so much. They have put – like, this house for the neighborhood that it's in has, like, a much higher value than it should because of the amount of, like, work they've put into re renovating it and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know whoever is going to buy this house next will not put the same amount of work into it that they do. It's going to be very weird to see that, you know, what mm -hmm. things that my parents like, like we have this, this, um, little like flower, we have flowers and plants in, in the front yard. And a lot of them require lots of attention, like every single day. And like, they require to be like dug up and, and put back in it during the winter. And I know for a fact that those things are not going to be there once we move out of the house. Yeah. So in that way, Christian, I, I agree with you. Like, I, I definitely am in the same boat as you with that one. It's because I'm going to yeah. steal them. <laughs> You're going to move in? No, I'm going to just steal your flowers. You don't know where I live. You know, <laughs> okay. So, you know, we kind of got a little, little, there, but you know, it's, that's a flavor. That's what we do here. We just kind of like speak the flavor. Sometimes it's not all that great. It happens. But I have an interesting question for the three of you. And you know, I, maybe if you guys need a minute, that's okay. That that's fine. I, I respect that. But you know, the last podcast when you asked me an interesting question, uh, I would say it was interesting <laughs> in the bad way. <laughs> no, it was greatly interesting. All right, because a can of spaghettios is an animal. But it's fine. Yeah, We're not going back to that debate. Um, sparked a conversation. Oh, one thousand percent. And I think this definitely will as well. <laughs> If each one of you had to choose where you would like to see that's the flavor go in the future, like what would be like the the thing you want to see? Whether it be like a something or another something or or another thing, like what would be like the one addition or like change that you want to see? And it could be in a positive way, could be in a negative way. Maybe you want to see the show end. I, I don't fault you for that. Uh, <laughs> well, but... you stole my answer, so I guess I'll go with my second one. No, God, no. Um, the bakery. Well, you know, just kind of have a little bit of fun, you know, kind of see, because I, I always talk about, like, on the show where I want to see it go, but never really, like, where my, my guests would like to see it go. I actually have an immediate answer to this, so I want to go first. Um, okay. It's shocking news. Um, <laughs> I feel like I know your answer, too, but we'll see. <laughs> well, okay, so, no, no, this is, this is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the flavor. The phrase, that's the flavor. Christian Slider has so many unique and interesting flavors. And, and Christian, I think this is the big reason why you wanted to start the podcast was to share some of that. And to, to your, your friends are part of your flavor, you know? So you mm -hmm. wanted to share that with people, right? And, but something I've realized listening to the podcast and being on the podcast is that like you have such like a big personality and you have the voice for it. 
and I feel like that's been part of the success of the podcast. Maybe not from a numbers standpoint, but definitely from like I enjoy listening to the podcast. Yeah, um, and you being the host is a huge part of that. I feel like maybe making the podcast about other people's flavor, and maybe not even people you know. You know, like making it a podcast about like stories that people just wouldn't hear on a regular basis flavors from all across the country definitely I, w I would love to see something like that and i think what's great is i know you and i have have had this this conversation or like come up in conversation and it's something that i want to do as soon as i i feel like i'm able to do it you know what yeah. i mean because i don't feel like i can do that next week i mean yeah. hypothetically I, I i could but like, I don't feel like I should, if that makes enough sense. Right. Because I feel like I, I personally have an, enough stories to tell that I feel like until those stories run out, like I feel like I'm okay in a sense. Now, mind you, okay doesn't mean doing great. Right. So I definitely – so I don't know. It's definitely a weird thing. But I don't disagree with what you said. I'm not, I'm not shooting that down. It's definitely been an, an idea I've bounced around in my head of ideas yeah. as well. The biggest part of it is that if you want to change the podcast or to evolve it, you have to be right. comfortable. You know? right. And right now I think you're definitely just enjoying yourself you know, talking about life with your friends and stuff. Yeah. Which is a fun time. So. Yeah. Now, Beth, Matthew, where, where, who wants to go? Where do you guys want to go with it? I think eventually, uh, video podcast, mm -hmm. live guests. Yes, well, yes. I mean, of course, they'd be live guests, but like, yeah. <laughs> so I was actually uh, I was hanging out with Ozzy last night, and so we were talking about this. Of like, definitely, my goal is once I think you know I'm moved and I'm resituated and stuff, and I can finally finish building my computer, maybe, um, <laughs> is to definitely start doing a video element and I definitely want to do the show live as well. So like, that's again, another thing that I really want to do. So it's great that somebody else wants me to do it. <laughs> yeah. And now Beth, you saved, you saved yourself for last year. So I'm curious to see, curious to see what your answer is. Um, I don't know what platform you would do this on. If you would like move it to YouTube or maybe like make a Patreon and make it like exclusive content. But I would love to see you do like short skits. Like, I don't know, like your own skits, skits with other people. Like, I just think that would be so funny. I don't know. I love that. Hmm. I feel like it's definitely the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be like a little burst of flavor, you know, like you're eating your soup and you just get like some seasoning or like a bite of like a dumpling and you're like, oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because uh, again, Beth, Beth brings up a great point of that. It's like. But people sometimes talk about it, they're like, oh, man, the biggest thing about the podcast is, like, it's long. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't really do anything about that. You know, it's just kind of how podcasts are. Um, and, of course, so shorter form content and definitely different styles of content has also been one of those things as well. So, I don't or, know. I'm, yes, yes. It's actually, you know, making the podcast longer but segmenting it. I've also thought about that as well. Uh, now, mind you, I'm also... I've been experimenting on on the back end a little bit of like audio clips as well for mm -hmm. like advertising purposes and marketing uh, side of things, but that's another story. But yeah, definitely, I I I I've thought about the segmenting thing, but I feel like it's something I want to stay away from at least for now. Uh, but even though I know there's people out there that do it and do it well, I just don't feel like it's an avenue I want to take. Um, so yeah, but I'm glad to know that all of my friends. Um, well, at least they're not all of my friends. You know, obviously, it's not like you, you three are my only only friends. Uh, but <laughs> gangs that, all that, here. <laughs> that you three uh, definitely have ideas that kind of mirror mine or some of the things floating around in my head. So that's kind of great. But on that note, on on that hopeful experimental in in invental in, wait inventoral in, 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 um, inventive inventive there we go that's the word inventive inventive note uh it's time to bring this episode of that's the flavor to a close and let's be honest this episode kind of went all over the place started out a little crazy like you know a little creative a little chaotic got down to like you know a little more informative went down a little bit emotionally you know got into like the dumps a little bit kind of got a little retrospective and brought it back up at the end with a little hope so you know definitely kind of map that out you know feel 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 free to map out that emotional tract uh that's but flavor yeah, exactly. It's the flavor. It goes all over the place. But <laughs> Matthew, Cameron, I want to thank you guys to returning. I want to thank you guys for returning to the show and coming on as guests again. I appreciate it. And you guys know I love having you on, and I hope you guys enjoy being on the show. I think all the thanks belongs to you. 
Oh. I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> no. I think most of the thanks definitely belongs to me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and Beth, uh, and Beth, I want to thank you for coming on the show for your first time, finally, which Yay. is definitely, you know, my fault. But I, wanna, I'm, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. This was fun. That's good. Ooh. That's good. You're never coming on again. It'll be another 18 episodes at least. But um, At least. At least another 18. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, audience, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as well. Episode 18, we are nearing episode 20 in two weeks that's so rapid and crazy and wild but 2020 yeah and then i think if i do the math right we'll actually hit 25 before the end of the year so that's nice. that's that's interesting but on that, that note audience sense. it is uh thank you guys for tuning in the episode i hope you guys enjoyed it again it was a little bit more subdued but yeah i've been christian slider this has been that's the flavor just take care of each other be be kind be great and until next time stay flavorful <laughs>